Hello and welcome to another narrative process video. In this I'll probably not talk through the entire thing because it's an, almost an hour long. But um, yeah, I still felt like this would be a maybe a good example to showcase more of the process and talk you through it. Okay, so first I'm laying down some base colors just to get an overall impression of the image and the scene I want to create. I found that um, this helps me a lot to, like I said, just get a feel for the scene. Though I have started some of the pieces in Mermaid with the sketch first. I don't necessarily think either one is right or wrong. I guess I just do it on a like case-by-case -case basis, whatever feels uh, good. And also you can see I chose to vary the colors from the reference a bit more because I had this like impression in my mind that I wanted the um that I wanted it to be um well more lavender toned on the top and I, I I had I had this impression of like lavender so I uh, went with this and I think in the end it turned out well because I fiddled around with the overall colors a bit more and now we're already straight into sketching the figure. Like, I'm laying the base colors down super roughly at first because I know I'll go in and do more. And then the first uh, figure sketch is also pretty rough and rather gestural, though I am actually not really experienced with gesture drawing, but I, I guess I'm making, I'm making it work. <laughs> and now we're back to the background, just fiddling around to get the overall color and value structure right and this is also something that I had in mind with my first like vision in my mind's eye is that I wanted to have like floating water plants and um, I'm already putting them them in like right at the beginning so I can get a better sense for the overall scene of the picture because if I had not put them in uh, like right away I think I would have made uh, different decisions down the road because now I always have to keep them in mind when looking at the picture. I also, you saw, I did this uh, with like a hard round brush. And honestly, I think it would have been better if I had done this with the like drawing shapes with the lasso tool and then filling the shapes in with a brush because this would have given me much better shapes for the plants. And in the end, I don't think the, I think the water plants are probably the weakest part of this uh, picture in the end. And um, I kind of wish I had done this with the lasso. But I wanted to try it, how it would feel and look like if I just chose a brush and then used the clipping masks, which you'll see later. And we're already refining the figure now. So um, I'm also kind of, like I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not really good at anatomy. I mean, I can I can make it work roughly, but I actually have no clue <laughs> what's going where. Um, and also a lot of the uh, reference figure is hidden uh, behind like her dress and something. And I also had this in mind that I wanted to uh, like have this uh, have this be a blonde uh, mirror man, I guess. And um, so I had to like change the figure a bit as well, like making the shoulders broader and the hips a bit smaller, um, just to like go with the like archetypical shape language of indicating that this is a male I'm drawing. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is also funny. Oh my god, my cat just. Oh my god, can you hear this? My door is creaking a lot because my cat is entering the room and it drives me crazy because it's super scary. <laughs> the sound I mean, not the cat. He's adorable. But anyway, like, and this is also funny because I think that having more rougher, like, line art, I guess, not necessarily really line art because you don't really see much of the, or anything of the line art in the end at all, but it really um, helps me having this be a lot rougher and not super refined because my end goal is to paint paint the entire thing and paint over it I guess um, and I used to make like super defined line art for a lot of my illustrations and then spent hours on the line art which you end up not even really seeing in the end so um, I'm keeping this more rough also something here 
with the lip uh, with the lips I did um, sometimes I choose to already indicate like a bigger plane or a value with like just a line or not a bigger plane in this case for example the upper lip if I did like super clean line art I guess I'd have to draw like the uh, like Cupid's bow part of the upper lip and then the part that goes towards the mouth but because um, my canvas isn't like big enough for this and I also don't really need it I'm indicating the entire upper lip as just one line instead of like having two lines that define the borders and also here you can see the reference for the um, like the face reference for the guy because like the bottom reference is for the pose and the overall image composition and then I wanted to have this be a blonde man <laughs> I guess and so yeah and in the tail you'll see it now as well where um, I'm fiddling around with the shape of the tail a bit but I'll go in with a bigger brush soon I think yeah here I go in with like a bigger brush and not super fine line art brush because this I think helps me to understand the form a bit better because I'm sometimes I'm having trouble if it's just like super fine line art to really um, think about the form of the entire thing so yeah also I'm laying in the hand the like back hand pretty roughly because I'm um, I'm not quite sure where to put the hand because the like for like the closer hand is already a bit different so I don't know how I'm going to paint the upper hand so I just kept it for later and now I'm indicating where um, he surfaces the water and where like there's the edge between the air and the water and where it would go along his form and I think putting this in early helped me a lot to um, like get a better understanding of the form of his body because like if you're doing this almost kind of like I don't know what's the word like slices of him where you have to um, think about where like like a oh my god like a map where the height is like these slices and stuff I'm not making sense right now and yeah, I also just now extended the canvas because it was um, too small. I figured I wanted the entire picture to be more elongated. And now we're back to the hand. This is the uh, second day I worked on this. I worked on this entire picture on the, over the course of four days, I think. I started it on May 30th, but um, kept working on it during June because I got a little ill and just... I a bit demotivated and then super addicted to Tears of the Kingdom <laughs> and then I postponed painting this but I think it in the end it, it wasn't really a problem um, though I do wish I had I had finished it like closer to May and not on the 7th and now the video on the 8th um, but I think it turned out fine because sometimes I just need to take a break from an illustration to be able to view it like with renewed eyes I guess and see different things that I didn't before so yeah whatever now I'm changing the um, color of the surface reflection to um, purple because I wanted to get the gown in with like this reference layer blue and having like two different reference layer blues for different things was just not working out it was confusing me so I changed the color of it and now the gown um I'm not sure how well I've, I've portrayed the folds and everything the, they, the gown is pretty rough in the end as well I like it but I, I think it could have been a lot better it was still quite it was quite difficult though to get like the folds and the water reflection right at the same time I think studying one or the other um, first like I've, I've done a lot of water reflections over the past month or so but I'm not super proficient at like um, fabric folds and everything um, but the gown looks a little rough in the end 
Um, I also chose, as you can see, the top part is more line art and then the bottom part is bigger, just um, planes or shapes, I guess, of the gown again and not um, super refined details where every line will go because first of all, nobody is going to look super closely at the tail because this is not the focal point so it doesn't need to have as much detail as the focal points do. And also because it just, it gives me a better flow, I think, if I do this like with more broad brush strokes and not be so crammed up and try to make like every fold perfectly pronounced. And um, yeah, now that the base structure of the picture is laid down, I can go in with the base colors. And um, I start with like the, um, like the body because I'm going to layer this in three different parts for the body for the figure like the body the leaf cloak and then the gown will be two it will be three separate um layers and then like layer stacks with like um clipping masks on top and everything i just love clipping masks man mermaid really uh invigorated my love for them i used them before but uh i think with like mermaid i really i, I got them <laughs> like i i got an intuitive understanding of them and it's super nice because they improved my workflow a lot so um yeah i also like to paint the base layer with like with a brush and not um, lasso selected because first of all it gives me more gentle edges for example for the, the with the hair i couldn't have done this like feathered hair um look if i had gone in with the lasso too like the lasso fill i mean and it just doesn't really lend itself well to my more painterly style. If you're going for more anime stuff, um, lasso selection fill is like perfectly fine because your line art uh, stands more on its own as well, and all of the shapes are more defined and not so like interwoven and going with each other. And now the leaf cloak. <laughs> I'm working. Spoiler. I'll be working on this a lot. <laughs> like. There are so many parts where I'm like, yeah, tinkering with the leaf cloak again and again. Because I don't think I really set myself up for success with this one. I really enjoyed um, from the last mermaid painting and one other I did like in the middle of May um, with the algae that are in like this lasso selection, which I, which I just did with the leaves. Lasso selection and then painting over the, and then painting in the selection with a brush and I was like yeah I really like the effect of a more like realistically rendered figure and then more abstract details in the piece which I think worked really well with the two algae pieces I'll put them up um so I was like how could I incorporate this like more into the scene itself rather than just a graphical like compositional element and I had like this vision for this picture with the leaf cloak and everything. I was like, yeah, the leaf cloak is probably a really good way to try to incorporate this method into the actual figure and more into the scene. Because like the floating plant things would be more just a graphical, a, a graphic compositional element. And then the leaf cloak is more inherent to the storytelling and the figure of the scene. But boy, did I... <laughs> and I fuck up the layers. It's like you see me tinkering around for like where is everything? I just didn't do the layer stack with the leaf cloak very well. There are it's super confusing. Like I just didn't realize where anything went and then I put clipping masks for coloring them on top and it got even more confusing and I'm just like what am I doing? And um yeah, I think it it looks pretty rough right now. It looks better in the end, though I think it could have been improved um, much more. But uh, yeah, the leaf cloak gave me a lot of trouble. And what I should have done, I'll try to do this later on. You'll see and I'll uh, point it out again. What I should have done is make like a layer for the plants he's lying on. Like the ones that would be like on his back. And then make another... Uh, two layers for the two overlapping parts that are over his body like a bottom one and then a m 
topmost one where all the leaves would be vis visible. That would have been so much better. I just kind of randomly drew leaves on separate layers and then hoped for the best. <laughs> and it was not a good idea. Not my brightest moment, but hey, live and learn. Um, this is also something I've realized that if I just take sometimes a tiny step back and try to think about how my decisions now will affect the painting process in the future, I can save myself so much trouble. And um, the leaf clock was a good example and reminder of this. And now we're on to like the coloring and um, shading of the figure. As you can see, I chose to deviate from the re um, colors on the reference here even more compared to the um, background where it's just, I guess, a more minor color adjustment because the model in the picture has a way redder and darker skin tone. But since I wanted to go with a blonde man and to have the entire color palette just changed a bit more, I'm going to put in a um, orange detail later on, which I'd already thought about now. Um, roughly, but um, I hadn't put it in because I was just, I guess, pondering the idea of putting it. I'll put an orange amulet that he's holding in his hands in um, later. So I wanted to have his skin tone be a little more desaturated and also a little closer to the green tones in the plants so that the orange of the amulet can pop out a bit um, more and that he looks more cohesive with this scene because in the reference image the contrast the color contrast between her skin tone and the blue of the water is the most eye-catching part but I had already put in the like backlit leaf cloak with strong colors and I was going to put in the orange amulet so I needed to tone something down otherwise the saturation um, of the entire picture would probably overwhelm the readability so I chose to kind of shift the um, color focal points a bit and also you can see like the exact layers I'm using. I'm using mostly normal layers because um, sometimes I'm having trouble really comprehending what some of the blending modes actually do and it's sometimes a little frustrating later down the road when they don't behave in the way you want to and with normal layers they always behave the same. I I say this as I'm putting in like one color dodge layer um, but I cho I, I'm trying to like use mostly normal mode layers and then picking the right colors from the get-go and not relying on the blending modes giving me um, like the color variation. For example, I'm rarely using overlay or multiply. I, I Like in the mermaid things, I've used them more in the past, but I think I'm shifting more towards using more normal layers because this is more intuitive to me, I guess, but to each their own. If you're like a master of blending modes, then more power to you. I wish I, I, wish I was that. And here I'm back with a uh, cloak. This is the third day I'm working on this where I, I had been pondering the look of the cloak for like two days and I was like, it's just, it's just looking weird because it was so boxy and the colors weren't right. I hadn't realized this yet, but I'll be later. At this point I was just like, the layers are so bad and the shapes are not right. So I'm going back in with the, um, <laughs> back in and trying to redraw it, but I'm like, then I have to do all of the like uh, all of the clipping masks and the coloring again and um, I was just like man I'll try to work with what I already had because um, I wasn't I, I didn't want this uh, illustration to like totally explode in workload and sometimes you I guess you just have to take a few losses and be like yeah I'll have to I'll work with what's already there instead of redrawing the thing like four times and wasting so much time on it. If this was like a more established or more planned illustration I first of all I, I would hope that I wouldn't make these mistakes or something but um, 
then I like spent more time and effort on getting it right. But for something like this mermaid challenge where I wanted to have fun with all of the pieces and try different things out, I was like, yeah, I'll just try to work with it. And here is where I realized that, my God, it's the colors that are just weird. There were way too blue leaning the greens because I was thinking about the leaves are on top of the light source which is coming from the bottom and then they'd be illuminated but I made them way too blue green and this is where like just now where I went in and made them a lot more yellow toned on the edges and I think this improved the look of the leaf cloak so much. I had already erased and and also I had erased out some parts to make it more PC and not so boxy and um yeah, now I've done uh, some few minor adjustments to the uh, base layer of the entire figure and now I'm tackling the gown because the skin tones and the rendering of the body was already like um, at a pretty well established state but the gown was super rough so I had to go with this first because otherwise I don't think... Uh, because. I'm trying to not let some parts be like not polished at all and then for example render the face uh, so I try to like keep things at a similar level of polish throughout so I'll work on the figure a bit then work on the background a bit then come back to like details and stuff and yeah you'll see the gown was um, fun to paint this is also I could have chosen a other uh, another blending layer but as I said I sometimes find them to be a bit hard to predict what exactly will happen with the colors underneath it and also with the color I chose and after I did quite a few um, color and light studies I'm finding it more and like I'm finding it more easy or more and more easier what's the right grammar for this like after the studies I'm finding um, it more intuitive to just pick the color I want in the end and not rely on having some computer <laughs> this sounds like I'm some kind of boomer but the, the, uh, the way the blending modes like change colors and everything so I'm just putting in the straight color I want I also wanted the gown to be more transparent than it is in the reference because in the reference it's rather opaque and just becomes a bit transparent on like the thinnest parts and where um, the wet cloth touches the skin but i wanted the uh, my piece to be a bit more ethereal and uh, see-through so i uh, went just with like a lowered opacity of the brushes and i think in the end, I'm lowering the opacity of the layer a bit too, um, but yeah. Also, I was trying to be conscious of the value because you just saw me darkening um, the the part of the gown that is turned away from the light source below because the um, like value changes in the gown are pretty interesting actually they're pretty subtle uh, but they do make such a difference so I try to be aware of that I also want to note that at the moment um, you're thinking yeah you were talking about picking the right color from the get-go but it's way too dark right now I already knew that I wanted to um, brighten it up in the end with like a blending layer like just overall brightness that is not like in the brush strokes but more like a general glow and and I knew that it would lighten the entire thing so I chose to make it a bit darker from the get-go because I already knew that my process would be lightening the entire thing up at the end. This is also what I mentioned earlier of thinking through the entire piece a bit more um, and I think I have become much better during Mermaid um, with this where I'm not like going from just one step to the next without any forefoot, not without any forefoot at all, but um, working more consistently gave me a better intuitive understanding of the 
mm, next steps into the future so I can plan better accordingly and set myself up for success a bit better during the entire process. Also, I think the gown could have been a little more more transparent. Like right now, it's still a bit uh, still quite transparent, but it becomes more opaque the more I render it out, just by the nature of putting down more paint. But um, yeah. Also, I do realize that some parts of the pound, like pound, some parts of the gown, make not a lot of structural sense. Like everything that's basically below his hips is a little just wild paint strokes, I guess. But as I said, I wasn't out here um, trying to make the perfect illustration. See, this is exactly the moment. Oh, this is even a normal layer. Funny. And this is exactly the moment I was talking about where I wanted to light up the entire um, thing a bit. This is the glow dodge layer. Is it glow dodge? No, it's color dodge. But um, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier because I knew I wanted to light up the entire thing and not um, and not just a few strokes because this gives me a more luminous appearance, I think. So and now I'm zooming back out because I was rather zoomed in for the gown and I'm like, man, these plants are looking rough. <laughs> this is also the part where I should have done something different because right now I hadn't spent a lot of time on the plants. I'm just half I was just haphazardly scattering them around, like right at the beginning. And um I didn't want to spend the time and repaint them with the lasso paint over trick. But I think I should have, because the shapes of the plants just aren't as juicy as they could be. I don't think they're super bad, but they do break perspective uh, quite a bit and they're just very nondescript, which I don't think works as well in this picture as it did with the algae forests in the other pictures. And um, yeah. Uh, I just, I thought I could get away with it, but I think it, in the end it detracted a bit from how the picture could have looked if I had spent more time on them. I don't hate them or something, but they definitely could have been better. So what I did was just, I duplicated, I'm very glad I did this by the way, I duplicated the first layer I did with the harsh, uh, with the hard edges. And then on the dupli duplicated layer I just blended around a few of the edges because the edges were like too much. And then put clipping layers uh, clipping layers on top to shade the entire thing. And th like right now you saw where I'm like, it's a little too blended. So I was really glad I had kept the original um, layer. So I put clipping masks over the original layer and shaded in a bit of that too. And I put a layer mask on the hard edge first layer and erased out a few parts where I wanted to have the more softer blended look of the um, blended uh, leaf layer. And here I'm tinkering around with the uh, blending mask to get a bit more saturation. And this is basically the final of the leaves. <laughs> I know. I don't think I changed them around more. Um, but you can see lighting the leaves already improved the overall like look of the image a lot. This is basically more or less how the finished picture looks even though we're like only halfway done. And now the background water. <laughs> this is the second thing about this image that I just don't... I, I don't want to say not like but I don't think that is very strong. I honestly should have kept it more painterly and I totally overworked it. I think because right now I think it's looking actually quite nice and enjoyable. In the end it looks pretty boring and um, plain. Because I was trying to get the like water ripple reflections that you can see in the reference a bit more. Where it's like more of a contrast between light and dark. But I didn't realize this while painting it. I only realized this later while editing the video and then looking at the um, painting again. 
after it was done. Um, I don't think it worked really well trying to emulate the reference here with the like stronger contrast between the light and the dark parts of the upper reflection in the water because I had already so much more going on in the picture with the plants because the reference image has just her uh, with the dress floating in the water and two light sources but mine has so much more other stuff going on with the leaf cloak and then later the amulet and right now also the plants so um, having the top reflection be more toned down would have been a smarter move and then I try to put in the um, like stronger changes in the reflection like right now I think it looks pretty good the thing but uh, I go over it again so many times and I mean it works like this is like right now comes I think the part where everything goes wrong <laughs> I've spent so much time in the background and then ended up pretty much painting over it like three times but sometimes they do be like that and, um, yeah. Because not every part of the, like, this is what I was trying to say earlier, not every part of the image has to be, like, super textured because your eye needs some parts where it can rest as well. I think right now it looks good, but I, this is here. Here I'm trying to emphasize, like, the darker parts of the reflection more. And I just don't think it really works. I should have stopped earlier, but yeah, I didn't. <laughs> also, I should have studied how these reflections um, actually work and how they look more, because I'm not even getting them right, I think. The edges of the... the edges for like the dark and the lighter shapes are super soft and I just wasn't able to really render it out as well as um, it would have uh, needed. So e it looked even strange. And also the perspective is a bit wonky on the reflection, so everything is just not working out up there. So right now I'm like, oh my god, it looks kind of strange, so I'm working on other parts again. <laughs> Also, I realized that I don't have any ripples that the figure is causing while he's swimming, so I'm putting them, them in now. Yeah. Also, this is something where I had to be really conscious of the value, because putting in a, um, like, lavender color that is just a bit too bright was already so jarring in some places this is where the values were like so close together that just slight inconsistencies were really showing up a lot and um, it was a bit hard sometimes to pick the right value from the get-go so I have to end up re-picking the colors so many times but yeah and now one of my favorite parts I was so fed up with the background I had to treat myself and I I'm going to render the face. This is always something that just... I already liked how it looked here, but I love how it turned out in the end, I think. Even though the anatomy is a little wonky, I guess. Something that is also not in the video that I realized while editing the video was that um, his head was a bit too short. So in the final image that you'll see at the end, I liquefied his head like the back of his skull to make it just a bit bigger. Um, you, it doesn't really, uh, like, it's not super apparent, but when I turn it, uh, it's not super apparent when he's, like, lying, but when I turn it around to, um, oh my god, there's a big thunderstorm going on outside. Uh, but when I turn his head around, like, right now, you can see that it's just a bit too shallow. It almost looks like the back of his head is missing so I do end up fixing this but it's not on video it's super funny because while painting I didn't even like really realize this at all <laughs> so it's really fun but anyway I just kind of really like painting faces and also hands even though those are pretty frustrating sometimes because they are like usually the focal point of the pictures so it's always nice to just 
go in and go with the flow and just let loose and render stuff out. And yeah. I had a bit of trouble with the ear because I'm I like ears but I haven't studied them in a, a while so the ear is looking a little rough but I think it it works and also just defining the values of the face you can see where I like enable and disable the uh, rendering layer just the values of the not the face the hair did so much to make him glow a lot more and now we're on to the face i was already pretty pleased with all of the colors i had laid down in the roughing in stage but you know you can always polish it up a bit more something that i'm working on right now is i really wanted to get the chin area right where the like my lavender light hits his bottom lip and then the side of his chin, which isn't in yet, but I thought that defining these two parts would be crucial to having the face like read more 3D. And um, I'm just tinkering around because rendering the face, it's also pretty tiny in the entire thing. You can see my brush size is like 13 right now. And it's it, I think it varies between like five and 30 or something because it's, uh, like a pretty tiny and finicky detailing process, but we're so good at recognizing faces. The face has to be relatively right, at least. And now you saw I just put in the light reflection on the bottom lip and mm, it already like improved it so much. I love it. <laughs> and now I'm putting in the side of the chin where like the chin, you can see it in the reference too, because the, the chin has like more planes that protrude, protrude, protrude from the rest of the um, planes of the face and the mouth and uh, I wanted to get that in. So he looks so happy. I was happy too. So yay for us both. Also putting in like the reflection on the top lip that I just did like also helped so much. I hadn't realized that the top lip, of course, would also catch a lot of light. It's like the part below the bottom lip that catches light and then the middle part of the top lip while the bottom lip itself is in shadow. So getting this right, I think, helped with the readability of his face a lot. It's always so funny to watch this back and be like, yeah, I didn't really change all that much compared to the roughing in stage. And then you disable the layer and it's, and it's like, wow, <laughs> okay, I did do a lot. It's always the magic with rendering the face where like so tight, so minuscule changes can have such a big effect. Like here, I was trying to uh, render the eyelid a bit more, but I end up scrapping, I think, most of it um, because I kind of liked how it looked before. Right now, I'm zooming out because sometimes you just have to zoom out and see how the overall impression of the face is rather than the minute details you put down and uh, yeah. Also, I'm really sorry because I'm recording a time lapse in Clip Studio as well. The program becomes so slow <laughs> sometimes and it, it has to save for several seconds. So there are some delays in there. This is usually where I take a break and take a sip of water <laughs> while painting. Yeah, also we're ending the... We're, we're reaching the end of day three. I started a little bit on the hands, but I just wasn't, I had like painted for two hours already and it just was a little bit out of steam trying to render the hands after I had rendered the face. And here's where I put in the amulet. It's so crazy. It happens in like a few minutes. 
it's like 30 seconds in the time lapse and um, it adds so much. I love that I chose to put in the amulet because you can see when I zoom out just this tiny tiny speck of pretty saturated orange is such a nice eye catcher in the entire thing. And and um, yeah, this is also where the de more desaturated skin tone comes into play because now the orange has more time to literally shine. And also here I'm just zooming around because I knew I was done for the day. I was, I'm just zooming around and looking at things and how it's working out and just pondering what I could do next. And this is the last day. This was uh, yesterday where I finished the entire thing off. I mean, right now it almost looks like the finished version because this is usually how it goes. It looks pretty close to finished from far away for a long time but there were so many details that were still missing like the entire hands weren't properly rendered and the entire reflection weren't properly rendered which is spoiler alert pretty much everything I do on the last day so uh, yeah we're jumping straight into the hands and yeah it's also I, I don't think the hands turned out particularly well in this one especially the bottom one which i'm working on uh, right now it just doesn't feel very dimensional to me in the end result but i just wasn't able to get it to exactly the like roundedness and three dimensionality i wanted to have but you know sometimes they turn out super well and other times they're just okay but that's that and that's like living and learning <laughs> yeah so this is funny i'm trying to get the top hand i'm like there's something about this hand is weird and you can probably already see it but i didn't at this point so i'm tinkering around with the bottom more and um yeah the index finger is uh way too long i i realized this soon and i'm like <laughs> scrambling to trying trying to fix it and i i think i do fix it in the end but um it's like it's so funny watching me struggle through it <laughs> and this is something that helped uh, define the hand a lot is putting the like bottom two bottom bottom two parts like what's the word joints <laughs> there we go in shadow helped a um lot with the three dimensionality of the hand this is where i realized that the fingers are way too uh, short then i accidentally cropped the entire canvas <laughs> and um yeah and now i'm like this hand looks so strange let me try and shift the index finger into a different pose maybe this will add more visual interest and i'm like no no it just really doesn't it doesn't work it didn't work with the entire hand position i think but it also didn't really go with the flow i had planned for the picture because i wanted this to be really soft and dreamy and like one raised finger was too crampy i guess and here this like shading the hand more, having more of the uh, lavender light be reflected on the back of the hand. This helped a lot try, uh, to sell the three-dimensionality of the top hand, I think. And this is pretty much the final. I think the index finger is still a bit too long, but I guess we're, this is where it's left off. Also, something that I did, which I didn't talk about, I combined the... Um, third and fourth finger into one finger mass and separated the index finger out a bit more to give this to give his hand a more like natural resting position because um, before all the fingers I think were equally spaced to each other and um, it just didn't look very like natural and easy and yeah now we're rendering the body there's not a lot of rendering on the upper body to do because most of it is hidden anyway but i try to define his um chest and um like belly area a bit um but like there's not much there 
Um, it's basically just rendering the tail, which I don't think turned out super well, but um, it's not one of the focal points where you end up looking a lot anyway. So yeah. Also, it's so funny to hide all of the clothing because then you can see how rough everything is actually looking. Also, something that you might have realized is that there's a more saturated and more orange stripe where the um, planes turn from light into shadow. This is basically to first add a little bit of visual interest, but it's also trying to simulate like subsurface scattering where some of the lights from below would enter into his like skin and then bounce, bounce off again um, while traveling through blood so we can see a more reddish or in this case more orangish hue. You can see subsurface scattering for yourself if you hold your, like, your hand before a lamp or your um, phone flashlight and then you can see that along the edges of your fingers um, it will look pretty like purple, not purple, it would look pretty red pink because of all of the blood that is like shining through and something where you can also see it and other people is in the in the ears a lot. I think I could have, now that I've mentioned it with the ears, I think I could have incorporated more subsurface scattering into his ear. That would have been um, a nice touch. And um, also reflect more of the visual like language from the more saturated uh, amulet he's holding into the rest of the body on like strategic points like the hip is pretty saturated which I wanted to like um, ground the amulet a bit more like so that the orange of the amulet can be found in other parts of the picture as well and I think the ear would have been a really good place for it too but I didn't do it I might end up doing it after the video. We'll see. I probably won't. Actually, I'm no, I, I don't. I'm done with the piece. I have to let go of the piece sometime. Otherwise, I would be still painting my first mermaid day one painting. <laughs> because you can always keep on rendering and improving things. But uh, sometimes you just have to call something finished. I will talk about this more uh, in my... In the a video I have planned where I talk about everything I've learned from Mermaid. So if you're watching this while it's out already, then click on it somewhere here, linked, I guess. And if you're watching this before, then stay tuned and subscribe, I guess. Wow, look at me being an influencer or not, I guess. <laughs> and now we're at a part where, in the painting, I mean, where um, most of the things are pretty much done and where I can go into like overall details on a lot of the different things. So here I'm just jumping around between a lot of the different parts in the image and um, looking where it needs like maybe a few more details or a little bit more emphasis or if the colors and edges are right and everything. And um, yeah, this is also where I zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. This is the part where I really have to, um, where I really have to get my analytical brain out a bit more. For example, when rendering the hands or the face or something, I can let go and let intuition take over a bit more. But when adding some of the final details, I really have to look at like where do where does where does the image need stuff again for example here i was like this is something i talked about just now i was like the orange is a bit too isolated it needs just a hint more orange saturation in other parts and i thought his face wasn't looking as lifelike as i had wanted to so i just gave him a bit of like orangish blush on his cheek and the nose and mouth area and I think it worked out really well. You almost can't see it but it brings a bit more harmony into the entire thing. Now I'm emphasizing the glow of the amulet a bit more because I want this to be one of the focal points and um, here I'm fiddling with the background again because I just hated it. This is also what I meant 
where I erase out almost all of the detail I put down earlier. I think it works in the end, but it definitely could have been nicer. And now we're on to the last big step, rendering the surface reflections. I kept this for last because I knew I had all I had to have all of the um, previous layers, like actual layers, if you think about um, the three-dimensionality of the scene, because everything had to be pretty much in place before I could start on the surface reflections I knew, so everything would already be close to done. So I knew exactly where the reflections could go and Later I'll um, paint over, like on a new layer obviously, I paint over a lot of the down of the figure below with like other colors. But right now I'm more most concerned with exactly the edge where he's protruding out of the water. Because this is one of the crucial parts I think to really sell the fantasy that he's floating. And some parts of his body are underwater and some parts are above water. Here you can see me fiddling around with the blending modes a bit, um, because the like the edge of the water is pretty luminous, and I was like, hey, maybe with the blending mode. But then I realized what I said earlier that it's hard for me to work with blending modes if they aren't there just to give a general glow to an area. So I go back to a normal layer and just painting in the straight value that I see. This is the easiest and most intuitive path for me. Here I'm going in with a broader airbrush to like just go over some of the figure details and like I guess put in the color of the water in quotation marks over some parts of the figure because where he's like the parts where he's in the air and the parts where he's below water can't be exactly the same color. This is, I think, where I dropped the ball a bit. It could be emphasized a tiny bit more, but the water is pretty clear and you wouldn't see a lot of the like um, water uh, in areas that are pretty close to the surface. But I think the reflections do sell this a lot better. And um, yeah, it's... Uh, at this point also I'm just trying to intuitively put the reflections where I felt they would be right and not sticking close to the reference at all and just feeling it out. I end up erasing and redoing a lot of the parts but that's just part of the process and feeling it out where everything should go. Also here we're at the part where it's not just the surface reflections and the uh, edge of the water, but also like all of the, um, like a little, uh, what's it called? Not reflections, but distortions where the um, like ripples on the surface of the water distort what you as a viewer are able to see from the figure below. So this is where I take parts of the color of the water into the figure, where I take parts of the uh, leaf cloak into the water and into the gown, where I take parts of the gown into the water and just kind of scribble things around. I'm trying to be a little more tighter with where I put all of these distortions uh, around the focal point area because I don't want this to be too noisy because there's already so much detail going on. But as you can see, on the tail area, I'm like just super slapping all of the colors around wherever I felt they would go. And now that the reflection is more or less done, I'm back to some general adjustments like of the overall image. It's basically mostly 
lighting up a few things to make it glow a bit more and darkening others. So I um, basically darkened some of the shadow areas and lit up the gown and the leaf cloak from below just to give the entire thing a bit more dimension because my piece is already a bit higher key than the original image. First of all, the model in the original image has dark hair, which is a much more stark contrast than uh, my merman's blonde hair, but also some parts in um, her figure and her dress are way darker than whatever I have going on, but I really wanted to keep mine pretty light and ethereal. So I'm pr actually pretty happy with the value structure of it. It could maybe be a tiny bit better, but this is also what I men mentioned earlier, where I just sometimes you just have to keep uh, things as they are and move on to the next. Here I'm like, the reflections are a bit too distracting. They were just a bit too much in some areas. And then I played around with the opacity of the entire folder of all of the reflections and adjustments a bit, but I wasn't super happy with this and then I changed the blending modes just to see what they would look like. All of them looked absolutely terrible and I kept it at normal. Um, so I just go in with like a new layer to make some final adjustments. It's also so fun because usually you think that all of these final adjustments that are just like quick touch-ups um, don't really do a lot but I think these are really the defining moments for the overall impression of the thing. You can see me flipping around. Feel free to stop and use like the comma, comma and point key. It's in the German. I don't want know what some other language layouts of the keyboard, but skip around between the frames and see where I disable and enable like the few adjustment layers. And it makes such a big difference to the entire cohesion of the um, thing. And I just wasn't really happy with how the reflection looked, so I t took a closer look at my reference image and I was like, there are a lot of super, just fine, tiny specks of, like, distortion all around that really just gave such a nice texture in the reference image. So I whipped out just a normal hard round, a new layer, and just put in a few dots like, I looked where I wanted to put a few dots because I felt they would go there and then picked whatever color that was just a bit off. For example, in like the super light parts of the of the um, like light source down below, I picked something that is just a tiny bit darker or something uh, or like for the medium dark parts of the water, I picked something that's just a tiny bit lighter. Or for the area around the gown, I picked the lightest part of the gown color, then lightened it up even a bit more, did a few dots around here and there. And just these few dots, I think, do so much to sell the fantasy of this being water and this being such an ethereal, glowy place. And then I just went really ham when I started to realize that I really like how the dots uh, looked. And yeah, this is pretty much the final. I've cut something out where I tried to um, liquefy a few of the reflections around a bit because I didn't end up keeping them. And as I mentioned, I liquefied his head in the end image that you'll see like shortly to make the, um, like, is this his cranium? Like the back of his um, head to make this a bit more voluminous because I thought it was looking a bit too shallow. And um, yeah. Here's the final result. All in all, it took around six hours to finish the entire thing. Um, there are definitely parts that could be improved, for example, the floating water leaf parts, but generally I'm really happy and thank you for watching.